It's 8.30. UK government marks at least £115 million for new Brexit systems. IBM job ad calls for 12 years experience with Kerbinets. Only Kerbinets is six years old. And Apple says don't close your MacBook with the webcam on or you might damage the screen. Backyard Tech. This is Tech News Today. 8.30 Tuesday morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tech News Today. Three stories to get through, all three from the register. Let's get into the first one. Um, UK government marks at least £115 million for new Brexit systems against backdrop of checkered IT project history in Customs and Border Control. Chief concerns for Customs Tech haven't gone away. The UK government says it has earmarked £115 million in spending for new IT systems to help with the management of customs arrangements and border data after Brexit transition period comes to a close at year end. Some £100 million will be spent to develop, quote, HMRC systems to reduce the burden on traders alongside additional investments in technology to ensure that new controls can be fully implemented, close quote. A further £15 million will be used, quote, to build a new data, sorry, quote, to build new data infrastructure to enhance border management and flow helping us on our way to the world's most effective border by 2025, close quote. <coughs> Excuse me. Both are part of a wider £705 million spending package, with the government also claiming it will invest heavily in infrastructure jobs as well as tech. The UK formally left the European Union at the beginning of January 2020, when it entered a transition period during which very little changed in a practical sense, in terms of movement of goods and people. The transition period comes to an end after December 31, 2020. And the, U and the deadline, I'm sorry, has passed during which the UK could have negotiated an extension. The government is now in the middle of negotiating a new deal with the EU. If that is not in place by the, year, by the end of the year, the UK is set to leave the union in a practical sense with no deal in place. In addition, it will not be able to access trade deals it currently uses by virtue of EU membership, including, for example, deals with Japan and Canada. Whatever IT systems the UK government plans to build, they will need to cope with these uncertain eventualities. The announcement by Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Cabinet Office Minister Michael Co Gove, was accompanied by the launch of a government advertising campaign under the slogan, quote, UK's new start, let's get going. That's the slogan? Unfortunately, those wishing for a new start risk being condemned to repeat problems of the past, and in Customs and Border IT, there are many. In 2015, the UK Spending Watchdog National Audit Office pointed out the Home Office had spent at least £830 million between 2003 and 2015 on an e-borders program that had failed to deliver the full vision. In that time, it spent £150 million on the settlement with Raytheon and £35 million on legal costs ending the contract with the firm. Among the program's objectives was to replace the Semaphore database, which has been running since 2004, and collect data from airline carriers about persons of interest on those who are on watch lists before they arrive at the border. September last year, the Home Office signed a £43 million, £43 million I'm sorry, 33-month contract extension with IBM to cover the, to cover the Brexit, Brexit period. Replacement systems include Digital Service at the Border, or DSAB. This was launched in 2016, but a notice in April 2018 announced CACI as a new technical delivery partner for ongoing development capabilities. Working across the present and future DSAB program 
in a deal worth nearly £5 million. That was to start in July 2020. The incumbent supplier was Scott Logic. I'll leave a um, link in the description for further reading of this, but if you've been following countries around the world as they, you know, try and tighten up border security and cyber security, you, you often see the fact that, and it's happened here in Australia, we're not immune to it. It's happened in the US, it's happened in the UK where the backdrop of IT errors and, and stuff ups when it comes to border control are phenomenal. So the UK is now spending another $115 million as part of a seven hundred and fifteen million pounds, I'm sorry, as part of a wider seven hundred and five million pounds. My UK viewers, you know the rules with the comments? What are you thinking? Seems like it could be another dud to old mate, but that's just me. <coughs> Excuse me. IBM, this one again, IBM job ad calls for 12 years experience with Kerbinets, which is only six years old. Other job ads make similar mistakes and candidates do worse. IBM's Global Technology Services has posted a job ad calling for candidates with a, with a quote, minimum of 12 plus years experience in Kerbinets administration and management. Close quote. Or well, Kubernetes, I think that's supposed to be. I thought it was Kubernetes. Which is a little odd because the first GitHub commit for the project was made on June 7, 2014. And a, fe and a feature freeze of version 1 was announced on May 22, 2015. Sharp minded reg readers will recognise that absence. Absent time travel is therefore not possible for anyone to have 12 years experience with Kubernetes. The ad is sadly silent on ha just how IBM expects candidates will have to find the time to accumulate a dozen years experience in a six year old project. At least IBM is not alone in making such a silly mistake. Developer Sebastian Ramenez who created FastAPI and Typer, recently shared a similar experience on Twitter. I saw a job posted the other day. It requires four years' experience in FastAPI. I couldn't apply as I only had one and a half years of experience since I created that thing. Maybe it's time to reevaluate that years of experience equals skill level, quote unquote. Ramirez posted post sparked a lively conversation about similarly bonkers job ads and unfortunately dopey candidates for tech jobs. Um, we interviewed a 28 year old designer in 2012 who told us he had 17 years experience in designing websites. I said, quote, Tim Berners-Lee doesn't have 17 years experience in designing websites. Who was Tim Berners-Lee, he asked. If you've ever spotted a daft job ad or been asked something especially silly in an interview, feel free to run. Oh dear. So, IBM, Big Blue, been around for decades, wants 12 years experience in cabinets, but it's only six years old. Yeah, okay. Yep, I, I can I can do that. The only way you'd be able to do that is do what uh, you know kids at school do: a cram session, learn twelve years in two years. That'd be the only way to do it, really, wouldn't it? Apple, don't close MacBooks with a webcam cover on. You might damage the display. There's a 0.1 millimeter tolerance, and OS has built-in tools for managing. Peephole. Huh? If you've ever been to a tech trade show, chances are you're willingly engaged personal details for web for a webcam cover. The plastic strip are loved by cheapskate vendors everywhere. 
but a new advisory from Apple warns against leaving them attached while closing your MacBook, lest it utterly bugger your display. Quote, if you close your Mac notebook with a camera cover installed, you might damage your display because the clearance between the display and the keyboard is designed to a very tight tolerances. Close quote. A post on the official Apple support page stated, Leaving it on, Apple warned, could interfere with the display's automatic brightness and true tone features. This issue appeared on the 12-inch MacBook discontinued last year, as well as all recent versions of MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Instead, Cupertino advises users to rely on built-in features of macOS, such as limiting what applications have access to the webcam through system preferences. It also suggests users keep an eye out for the green camera indicator light. Apple didn't mention cracked screens in, a, in its advisory. However, some Reddit users have complained about webcam covers breaking the display on their pricey machines, prompting a visit to the Genius Bar. If you need a cover, Apple has warned it shouldn't be thicker than 0.1 millimeters or an average piece of printer paper. And while this in theory doesn't preclude using a piece of tape, Apple warns against using anything that leaves an adhesive residue. Say what you will about the brand branded stress balls, but at least they're unlikely to break your Apple computer. Okay. Even the same can be said about a standard Windows laptop. It doesn't just affect MacBook with the little green light coming on. It's the same with a, win with a Windows laptop. If that webcam comes on, you're in trouble. And anyway, look, let's face it. Whether you're running Mac OS, whether you're running Windows, it doesn't matter. If someone wants access to your system, they're going to get it. But 0.1 of a millimetre... I mean, okay, look, I, I bag Apple because I don't believe that Apple... The price you pay for an Apple is ridiculous, considering in two years' time you've got to buy another one again at an inflated price. Now, we know Apple's engineering does run tight tolerances, and that's fine. 0.1 of a millimetre? Even if you disable applications that have access to the webcam, we know about the root problem that MacOS has. We documented that last year. 0.1 of a millimetre? I mean, there's type tolerances. Okay, I give you that, but for, for crying out loud... You've got to give your users... I mean, yes, the sticky tape thing been around for millennia. Feels like millennia, doesn't it? But, I mean, you've got to give a little flexibility, surely. There we go. Tech news today for Tuesday, July... Tuesday, the 14th of July, 2020. <sighs> I think I'll give up for the rest of the day, the way my brain's working. Uh, hopefully, coming up later on, I will have an update on the V490 for you. Other than that, I will catch you tonight for the convos. Try and enjoy your Tuesday. Have a good one. Cheers.